There's no denying, Class D amps have come a long ways over the past few years. In this video, I'm going to compare three solid examples of modern Class D amplifiers. Well, hello YouTube, what's new? Chris the Frugal Audiophile with you here. And in today's video, we're gonna be looking at three relatively new Class D amplifiers. And you see them right here before you in this video. I know it's a little difficult to see them and in this shot, but I will be including a lot of B-roll in this video so you can get a better look at each of these Class D amplifiers. And I have them stacked here as best as I could because, well, they're all different sizes. But hey, that's the way it goes. But before we get in this video, please be sure to like and subscribe. Also, check out Patreon and buy me a cup of coffee. If you like this kind of content, I would greatly appreciate your support. So today we're gonna to start a little bit differently than I usually do, and that will be with the assignment for, well, this time it's for me. And that assignment will be for me to compare and contrast these three relatively new Class D amps to determine what I like and do not like about them. And at the end, I will be giving some recommendations for you. So let's start out by looking at design and specs. And I'm going to put up on the screen here a chart with all three of these amplifiers and the specs that I'm going to be going over. Now, I'm not going to cover everything that is given here in this chart because, well, this, this video will probably be 30 minutes long and get really boring. I just want to go through some highlights here on, on this chart for you that I think are the most interesting or the most helpful. So to begin, these amps basically have the same type of housing. It's a black aluminum housing. Although they have some differences between each of them. For example, the Fosse Audio just has one center button up front that acts as both the power toggle and volume control. The SMSL or the A50, it has a screen on it, the other two do not. And the RSL, it has silver buttons, which I really like, along with two metal toggle switches on the front of it. So they are similar, but yet each very distinct in their appearance. And of course, all of them have external power bricks as most Class D amplifiers do. You can see the measurements there before you on the screen with the V3 being the largest and the SMSL being the smallest. And then of course that means that the RSL is coming in somewhere in the middle. Same goes for weight. Again, the uh, Fosse is the heaviest, then the RSL, and then the SMSL. You gotta notice a trend there. When it comes to power, I just like to highlight that you can see there it is listed that the Fosse Audio has 300 watts per channel at four ohms. And that, I would say, is not the most accurate of measurements, but in my findings, it did seem to be the most powerful. It actually has the best total harmonic distortion numbers at less than 0.00. .00 three percent, making it perhaps the most clear and accurate amplifier. Stay tuned to find out. All these amplifiers are going to have a stereo RCA input. What sets the RSL part is that it has a USB-C input, whereas the other two only have analog inputs. And the RSL and the SMSL, <laughs> that's a tongue twister, they both have Bluetooth inputs. Now, I could not find a spec for the Bluetooth on the RSL. I'm gonna say that as with most Bluetooth, it works, it's functional, it's not the clearest or the best option for inputs, but it's there if you need it or want it. For the power amp chip, you have on the Fosse Audio a Texas Instruments TPA3255. I believe that's a relatively new chip. And then on the SMSL, we're actually going to have an Infineon MA12070IC power amplifier. Now, as far as outputs are concerned, what you're going to have on all three of them are five-way speaker binding posts. They look relatively the same, uh, if you can see in this picture here. Not sure they all are, but they're very similar. And then on the Fosse Audio, you're going to have a fixed 3.5 millimeter stereo output. I'm guessing that would be if you wanted to daisy chain it to a headphone amplifier or something like that. You could not use it with a subwoofer because it is fixed unless you only play everything at one volume. Let's say perhaps maybe you are using your DAC as the volume control, and then you could use this as a sub output. Just keep in mind that 
there are, are no bass management settings in the Fosse Audio. So that's something you'll have to do on your sub. Now, as you also see here, the RSL actually does have a variable 3.5 millimeter analog, what they call a subwoofer output. And that is a really handy feature to have. You're going to need a Y splitter cable, but those are relatively easy to find. Also, you will need a subwoofer that has stereo RCA inputs on it, or else you're going to have to get a few adapters to kind of make all that work. If your sub only has a mono sub input, like my BIC F12 sub does in there, but I actually was using this with my mono price 8 inch sub, so that didn't matter as a stereo input. Just use the Y splitter. So something to keep in mind, but that is a variable output, which makes it very handy for connecting a sub to this amplifier. It also has a built-in crossover. So that means what it's gonna do is send 90 Hertz and above to your speakers, 90 Hertz and below to your subwoofer. Of course, there'll be a crossover there. So it just doesn't hit a brick wall and then just go up and down from there. There will be a, a crossover to help your speakers and your subwoofer blend carefully, thus the name crossover. So that is all included on the RSL, making it really a standout amp in this, this bunch. But is the best? Well, stay tuned to find out. Oh, before I forget, the SMSL is the only one that has a remote. So that's what you need. It's the one you're gonna have to go with in this bunch. Finally, you can see price there with the RSL being the most expensive, then the Fosse Audio, and then of course the SMSL at 70 bucks is the cheapest one in this bunch. Now, um, there, there is some price discrepancies with the Fosse Audio. It depends on where you buy it. If you get it on Amazon, it is 90 bucks for the 32 volt power supply. And then the 48 volt power supply is 60 bucks, making it 150 bucks. Well, that is an option. If that's what you feel most comfortable doing, you can do that. But you can get it with the 48 volt power supply for $92. Uh, I think it's even has free shipping on AliExpress. Now it's gonna take a little bit longer and some people are less comfortable using AliExpress to order things. So if that's you, you're gonna to have to look to Amazon or another service. But in my research, AliExpress has the V3 with the 48 volt power supply for the cheapest. It's actually only like eight or nine more dollars than the 32 volt. So why wouldn't you just go ahead and get the 48 volt? That is what I did, although when I bought it, it was not quite as cheap. It's gone down in price a little bit over the past couple of months. But I think that's the way to go if you're considering the Fosse Audio. So now I want to talk about what I like about each of these amplifiers. And to begin, we're going to look at the Fosse Audio. I like its simple design. It just has one button along with a status LED on the front of it, otherwise it's a black box with the external power supply. And it's very, it's very simple. Nothing that is unique or stand out about it. However, it blends nicely with most of your other gear. I appreciate that about the Fosse Audio. This one has the power. Okay, this one has the most power of any of these three amplifiers. The RSL is close, but the Fosse Audio, it is just a Class D powerhouse. I was able to play my music with ease up to 90 decibels. I was listening to 10.8 by Dead Mouse, and yeah, it was just rocking out my little office there. I was getting 90 decibels at three feet, so that's something to keep in mind. It is the most power that I've ever used in a Class D amplifier. Does that make it the most powerful Class D amplifier out there? Well, no, I have not heard or tested all Class D amplifiers. That would be nearly impossible to do, as there are just hundreds of them out there. But in my testing, in my experience, it is the most powerful class D amplifier I have ever used. Have I beaten that dead horse? You get it. Also, the Fosse Audio has some amazing cooling. You can see here in this series of pictures, just some of the ventilation that is on it. It is the most ventilated class D amplifier I have seen so far in my experience. So that means I was able to play this thing loud. I mean, I was rocking out at, you know, 85 to 95 decibels. Yeah, I did hit the 95 decibel peaks. That's kind of when it started to fall apart a little bit, but it could um, peak up to 95 without a whole lot of issues, as long as you weren't sustaining that amount of volume. But doing that for an hour straight, listening to all my test tracks, it was still very cool to the touch. It was quite impressive, really. Finally, I do like that you have an upgrade path 
for the Fossi Audio. It's kind of strange that on AliExpress it's not that much more to get the 48 volt power supply, but you know, that's just kind of the way these Chinese amplifiers go. Pricing can be all over the place. Just keep that in mind. But it is a nice option. If you don't need a ton of power, then just get the 32 volt. Buy it on Amazon, you have the ability to return it if you don't like it. So next, what I like about the RSL IA255.1. First, I love the design on this one. I love the silver buttons. I love the size of it, the form factor, everything about it. I just, I love its design. I love its feature set. It has some powerful features with the crossover. I've never seen a Class D amplifier like this with a, a built-in crossover. Now, it too had plenty of power for what I need. In my desktop situation, I was playing some Hollywood Principle and it was able to reach about 87 decibels at three feet before having some distortion. It was not terrible distortion, but it definitely was there. And when I was listening to uh, Hello by Adele, her voice sounded very clear and very natural through the RSL amplifier. Also, I love the fact that it has a built-in DAC. So really, you could USB-C out to this from your computer, connect your sub and your speakers, enable the crossover, and call it good. You have yourself a pretty awesome desktop system, you know, depending on what speakers and sub you selected. And finally, what I like about the SMSL A50 here is that it includes a remote. If that is something that you need, then that's a handy feature to have. Using it on a desktop, it's not really necessary, but it is included. It's also the cheapest at 70 bucks, so you know, that's something to keep in mind too. When Class D amps were first popular, the SMSL SA50 was one of the very first ones available on the market. It cost about 70 bucks, but it was basically uh, a dumb amplifier with, with no extra features, no remote, nothing like that. The SMSL here actually has some nice features, including a remote, some, some EQ settings, things like that, because it has a screen for you to see that on it. So the new cheap SMSL basic dumb amp is not quite as dumb as it used to be, and it still costs 70 bucks. So the A50 sound is decent. It's gonna give you what is in the music. It's very one-to-one. -one. It's not going to make it sound better or worse. It's not gonna make it sound sweeter or, or warmer or more detailed. It's just gonna give you the one-to-one -one sound up to a certain volume level. All right, so this section, let's talk about what I don't like about these amplifiers. And to begin with, we'll talk about the Fosse Audio V3. So with this one, there is no remote, there is no digital input. So you're just getting a dumb, powerful amplifier. That's all there really is to it. If that's all you need, great. It'd be nice to see some added features, maybe an actual subwoofer output, maybe a USB input, so you could connect it to your computer, things like that, but it's not included with the V3. And so I don't really like that. It isn't said that it's included, which I, I realize that, but still, they're nice features to have. And that upgrade path for 48 volt power supply is a little weird and that is 60 bucks on Amazon, or otherwise you have to get it on AliExpress for a uh, cheaper version. In this section, I'm gonna include the frugality grade rather than taking up you know, more time in another section. So for the V3, I am going to give it an A-, minus, which is really a good grade. And the main reason for the A- minus is because it has a lot of power with a great clear sound. The only thing I took off for really was the 48 volt power supply issues, and that was really it. So now let's talk about what I don't like about the RSL amplifier. And the first thing is the name, the IA255.1, which took me four times to get it right because it's a bit of a tongue twister, but you understand what I mean when I say the RSL amplifier, right? First, there's no remote. It doesn't say there's a remote. A remote would be nice, but there is no remote included with this one. And the sound, did have just a few minor issues. First of all, I can hear it struggling with some instrument and vocal separation on certain tracks, especially busier tracks that included like electric guitars and other instruments in with them. They would start to smear just a little. It was not awful, but there was a little bit of that. And so I just wanted to make you aware of it, that it, it was not perfect in that regard, though it was very good. And also, it reached distortion at about 88 decibels. It, you know, it really depends on the track, what it's putting out, how much audio it's putting out. But that was, on average, what I found was about 88 decibels where it began to reach distortion. Finally, it doesn't have any other digital inputs except for USB-C. Again, it doesn't say that it does, but that is something else that would be nice to see in this amplifier. And for this one, I am going to give it a frugality grade of a straight A because it sounds good, it has decent power, but it has 
a great feature set with that built-in subwoofer output as well as a crossover. So it is really an awesome desktop amplifier. Stay tuned for more about that in the recommendation section. Finally, we have the SMSL A50. What I don't like about this amplifier is that there are some struggles with audio. First of all, it seems to be a little underpowered. Now, that is coming from my Emotiva Mini X and the Fosse Audio V3 which really are desktop powerhouses. I mean, they're not like the ultimate in power, but they are pretty powerful, really more than you need in most desktop situations. And the 850 here, it, it just couldn't quite keep up with those other amplifiers. Sound really began to distort around 86 to 87 decibel, which is, is close to the RSL, but definitely was, was noticeable that when I was playing 10.8 by Dead Mouse, the audio really started to smear a little bit. And even though it wasn't horrible, I definitely noticed it. And I wanted to let you know. But that's really all I don't like about this amplifier. <clears throat> it really has to do with its power and its audio reproduction. Finally, I wish that there was some type of digital input on the A50 here. Since it includes a remote, that would make it a really nice, inexpensive soundbar alternative. But Without that, you're either going to have to get a separate DAC, which SMSL will sell you for about 70 bucks, or you're going to have to use like your TV's headphone output, something like that. And that can be a little bit janky. It's not recommended, but it can be done. It could be used in that situation with either one of those methods, but still it would be nice to see a digital input on the amplifier. So I am going to give the A50 a frugality grade of B minus. I think it's a really good inexpensive choice. It's nice that it includes a remote, but the sound is lacking a little bit. Finally, this brings me to my recommendations for these three amplifiers. What I'm going to do here is just give you one recommendation for each amplifier for the sake of time. And the first is if you need a remote, well, the A50 is the only option you have for these three. There, of course, are plenty of other small class amplifiers on the market with remotes. I'll link some in the description, but in this stack right here, you're looking at the A50 and the A50 only. And it's not a bad option, especially considering that it's 70 bucks. The other choices are going to be more expensive. If you want all the power, you're going to have to look at the V3 here. And I'd highly recommend that you upgrade to the 48 volt power supply so you get even more power. And it really is a powerhouse. And that's what you're looking for. I can't recommend it enough. Finally, if you want something with a built-in crossover, a variable subwoofer output, and a USB input, you're looking at the RSL over here. And it is really a good option. It's a great size, it sounds good, it has a great feature set, all of those things make it a wonderful choice. Again, it's the most expensive at $110, but still that is because you're paying for great features, as well as a great design on that one. I cannot recommend it enough. Honestly, when I was using it on my desktop setup, I really didn't miss my Emotiva Class AB Mini X amplifier. It just is so good. Class D has come so far in the last few years, it's difficult sometimes to tell when you're using Class D versus Class AB. And so that is really a win for all of these amplifiers, but especially for the RSL. So that is a comparison of these three Class D amplifiers and a mini review of each. Have you heard any of these amplifiers? What do you think of them? Do you agree or disagree with my thoughts and my recommendations here? I'd love to hear down in the comments and any thoughts you might have on these amplifiers. More we could say, I thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to check out my links down in the description. And remember, frugal doesn't necessarily mean cheap.